Good evening, and welcome to the February edition of New Music Chicago Presents. Uh, my name is Ben Zucker. I am the Vice President of Communications and the, for New Music Chicago and the co-curator, along with Adam Kennell, of New Music Chicago Presents. New Music Chicago Presents is our monthly free streaming concert series where we get the opportunity to showcase the wonderful performers and composers who make up the membership of New Music Chicago. For those of you who might be tuning in for the first time and don't know, New Music Chicago is an organization seeking to promote uh, new contemporary classical and other forms of act musical activity throughout the Chicagoland area, including performances such as this and festivals, including the Impromptu Fest, Air Taxi Festival, as well as professional development workshops for our members. Our members are professional and student composers and performers, and if you want to join or support, you can too, um, by going to our website, newmusicchicago.org, uh, for more information and to join. We uh, hope that you, after seeing this, you will continue to keep tabs on us, on our website, at Future Concerts, and on Facebook as well. But for then, and back to now, uh, tonight we have the great pleasure of introducing and presenting uh, flutist Trevor Watkin and pianist Stephen Rawson, um, who have something that I don't think has ever we've ever really done in a New Music Chicago Presents concert before, uh, where these two, um, on behalf of the Access Contemporary Music School, are presenting music by the student composers of ACM. So what you're going to be getting is music from some of the newest of new and some of the future leading lights of Chicago music. So to give a little bit more ex uh, description of some of the pieces and what ACM does, I will now turn it over to Tri Should I stand on this mark? Should I no, I think you're... I'm not good. Okay. So, yes, Stephen and I are a part of Access Contemporary Music, and the byline that holds ACM together as an organization is the golden age of classical music is right now where we are. And the byline that holds our school together is that we must teach music through creating it. We're not necessarily encouraging all of our students to go out and become composers, although we hope they will, because, you know, it's much better to get in the kitchen and cook than to just show up for dinner. And so this wonderful uh, program was created through... So I, huh, unfortunately, um, with the Omicron variant sort of throwing a wrench into the plans, I'm actually eventually going to be doing a recital in Southern California full of pieces from Chicago composers. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to feature the work of some of the composers that we have at ACM. So I had a competition, and I will freely admit, I don't like competitions. I think, well, I don't, I don't care for them. But if I hadn't presented this as a competition, I probably wouldn't have gotten very many submissions. But because there was a competition with a wonderful jury to evaluate these pieces, six wonderful composers stepped up to the plate to write six wonderful new pieces to add to the gestalt of flute and piano literature. And uh, Stephen and I did a reading on December 18th at ACM, and literally a reading. We were reading through the pieces, and the composers were present to provide their input. You know, to the, the ability, was, we, has, we, have, we have composers that are as young as eight that have participated in this. And for me, I can't speak for Stephen, but the first time that I ever heard my piece played live was when I was 18 years old. And this is really an opportunity that I would have loved to have had when I was a child. And now that I'm an adult and a working professional, I can actually create this for myself. And so this program is really emblematic, in my view, of ACM as an organization. This is the bleeding edge of the bleeding edge of new music being created and to foster the next generation of composers in the hopes that they will continue to write. And, and provide us wonderful music to listen to. Especially now, in these interesting times that we live in, um, the fact that there were six composers that stood up to be counted and to present their work for all of you, I think that is something that should be commended. And as I said in December, without knowing how I would make it true, I said there will be a place 
in public performance for all of these pieces, and I'm so grateful that now that I can actually make good on my promise. And through, N if, through NMC accepting this proposal and agreeing to put this on, I am so grateful that I get to present these pieces to you. Um, first on the program, actually, um, so we're, we're bookending these six pieces uh, with uh, first a piece called, um, I watched, I, you saw me look at the title, I had to remind myself. Um, I watched The Leaves in the Wind by Jonathan Hanau, who I think at this moment is actually doing a Twitch stream. Um, he does wonderful Twitch streams uh, full of wonderful calming music uh, to study by. Uh, so this, I watched Leaves in the Wind by Jonathan Now, who is a current ACM teacher, and we will actually be ending tonight's stream with, a, with what I now understand to be a world premiere of Joel Steisen's Listopad, uh, which is uh, material that has not yet been released. So first we will begin with I watched Leaves in the Wind, and then over the course of the stream we will have uh, composer statements that each composer has prepared for you, talking a little bit about their piece and explaining exactly what they were all about. Do you want an a? Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I'll take an A. Um, everyone, please.
My name is Lila Mora, and my piece is titled, Wendy. My first thoughts writing this was, let's make a call and response. Wait, no, let's make a dance. Wait, no, let's do something with rhythms. Really, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I guess the idea that was anchoring this whole piece down was a sense of adventure with a dark twist. I began writing a ride around Halloween, so I had to get something a bit scary down. In my mind, I saw someone wandering through a dark forest, desperately searching for someone they've lost. At some point, a dark entity starts to chase them, and it leads them further and further down into the forest. After that point, the story gets a little complicated. After I was done writing all that, the last thing left to do was name the piece. And really, I just kept it in this placeholder the whole time. But after struggling with an array of ideas, I came to the conclusion that I should name it after my biggest source of inspiration for this piece. One of my favorite video game characters, Wendy. Not only is her voice that of a flute, but her sorrowful story could easily be connected with the one within my writing. I really loved writing this piece, and I had so much fun with it. I would like to give thanks to Access Contemporary Music, who challenged young composers to create and defy the boundaries set by our age. And of course, thank you so much to Trevor Watkin for ensuring our work is heard and shown. It is such a pleasure being able to share my work with you. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy.
my name is Bryce Marish, and I'm in fifth grade, and I am 10 years old. My inspiration for the piece called The Whole Cavern was the whole tone scale, as suggested in the name. I tried to incorporate a lot of that into my piece. Also, I'd say the mood of the piece is like a cavern, the darkness creeping up on you, that type of thing. Anyway, goodbye. Chicago, Illinois with my mom, dad, brother, and cat Rocket. I composed Jack of Diamonds after I wrote a piece called Ace. I was inspired to create music about characters in the deck of cards. I love playing games. Jack of Diamonds is a piece composed in E minor and E major. They flip between. The piece begins with two people hand cards. The main character's opponent is winning. In the second part, when the first player gets a jack of diamonds, he takes the lead. The game gets close and our player finally wins, and he lays down his final card, which just happens to be a, a jack of diamonds. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Andrew Inglada's theme is the first piano sonata I have ever written in my life. And uh, apparently so, Andrew Inglada happens to be a real person that this song is named after. And I wrote a song after him because I wanted to dedicate a song to him um, for how cool he was as a person and you know how really awesome he was and just really fun funny and cool and stuff and I, I felt like just like remembering him from my grammar school years I felt like I had an idea to just like write a song which would be his theme song do you miss him I do miss him and I miss him quite a bit actually it was nice to you it was nice to me he was nice to a lot of people and I wish I could see him again. So that inspired you to write this song? Yeah, I, I, don't, I think what kind of happened was one time I was just thinking of what to write and I just got an idea of writing about someone and he just happened to be the person that I wanted to write about. I heard you wrote other songs for other people. Yeah, I have, but those songs are apparently are like a work in progress. But may, I'd be interested in showing you these songs pretty soon. Okay, we'll look forward to it. Thank you. No problem. I'm Liam, I'm the composer of Clockwork. I started off this piece by just improvising on my keyboard for a bit, and then after that I took what I had and I made the verse, and then I finished off uh, by writing the intro. So not exactly in a linear fashion, but it's how I got it done. When I first submitted the track, I originally had a foot stomp in the middle of the chorus and a few times for during the rest of the song, but I ended up removing it because it didn't really add any value and it didn't feel like it portrayed the right feelings. I have no clue how I named the whole song, it just kind of popped into my head. And I'm pretty bad at naming things, so when I got a slight idea, I just went with it. I wasn't going to think about it anymore. And I don't really have anything else to say, except I hope you enjoy listening to this piece as much as I enjoyed writing it.
Hello, my name is Sarah Che. I have been working with Steven for a few years, and when he told me about this project, I spent a couple months working on it. Here is what I came up with. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> this last piece, I'm going to take a step away um, from what I understand now. This is actually a world premiere of Lustopath by Joel Steisens. And I'm stepping away deliberately. I had intended to concoct a flute part over the top of this, but as I described to everyone earlier, it's like putting ketchup on a steak. So I'm leaving Mr. Stephen Rawson. This is Lustopath, which is probably my favorite thing that Joel has ever written, and I get to go enjoy it in the audience just like you do.
here. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you to, Tra to Trevor and to Stephen for performing these beautiful works that last one was by Joel Steisen pre previously by the incredible work by the students of Access and Temporary. Lila Mora, Liam Lepeshku, Elliot Andrews, Sarah Che, Bryce Marish, and there's the sixth one, Ezra Schumanis, a wonderful Andrew Steen. Opening with the work by Jonathan Hanna. Indeed. So this is, again, this is uh, Mimi Chicago presents Access Contemporary Music. Thank you to Trevor, Stephen, and ACM. Uh, and forgot to do this up front, but we want to thank uh, Experimental Sound Studio, especially our brilliant live engineers, Ralph and Rui, who are taking everything by, by storm. And we can't wait to see you all next month for the March edition of Music Chicago Presents, presenting uh, Sound of Fool, performing works by Russia Freon. So thank you, hope you've enjoyed, and have a good night.